The holiday season is upon us, and with it, a deluge of new tech, trinkets, and advertisements convincing us to indulge. But of course, this torrent of consumption is nothing new, especially in the free market capitalist consumerist nation of the United States. Every year, the holiday shopping season spanning across November and December sees massive monthly profits for corporations while employees are crushed by inhuman workloads and environmental destruction runs rampant. And every year, the connections from consumerism to capitalism to the climate crisis are once again laid bare. Today we dive into the holidays and the manufactured desire for more, to understand how capitalism is driving the climate crisis. But it's not enough just to critique. We will also try to understand what will dismantle our current system and what could develop an ecologically sound and ethical world in its stead. This video was made possible by the people who support me on Patreon. Get early access to all my videos by becoming an OCC Patreon supporter. Underneath the bright glitz of Christmas lights and shrouded under the cover of wrapped presents lies the stark reality of the holidays in the Imperial Corps. Starting with the celebration of colonial genocide in Thanksgiving, followed immediately by the capitalist schemes of Black Friday and Cyber Monday that bleed into a month of Christmas celebrations foregrounding extensive gift-giving ceremonies, holidays have been co-opted by corporations and a relentless drive for profit and growth. Gift-giving has been present in the ethos of winter holidays for hundreds of years, a tradition in which some scholars point towards the 19th century New York City aristocrats for starting as a way of shifting December holidays from a season where poor people could demand food and drink from the wealthy and celebrate in the streets to one of cozy celebration in the home encouraging gift giving to children. But the amount of gifts were generally small in the 1800s and it wasn't until the rise of advertising around the turn of the 20th century that retailers, especially toy retailers, saw the potential potential of holidays for profit and capital accumulation. By the 2000s, US retail sales during the holiday season reached $416.4 billion and have only gotten bigger. Of the many factors driving the US shopper to spend an average of $1,000 on the holidays every year, advertising is definitely making a mark. Advertisements make us feel good about something we know deep down is either unethical, useless, harmful, or all three. They're the rose-tinted glasses that make the things in our homes seem necessary when they actually are not. So for a moment, let's pull off those rose-tinted glasses and understand the impact of the capitalist model on ourselves, our planet, and our holidays. The world today is highly unequal. As those in the imperial periphery toil under life-threatening conditions to extract materials from the earth, they fuel the lifestyle of those in the imperial core, which is comparably gluttonous, especially for the white ruling class. In core countries like the United States, we buy because we're told to. We buy for social change, and we buy to find happiness. And while we buy, our money fuels an untenable system. Consumerism is a cog in the capitalist machine. Corporations need us to buy more to fulfill quarterly growth goals. But the consequences of these pursuits are devastating. The world emitted 49.36 billion tons of greenhouse gas emissions in 2016 and continues to emit more each year. And at the head of historical emissions output is capitalist stronghold, the United States. Here, 40% of food goes to waste despite the prevalence of food insecurity. The average American throws out 95 pounds of clothes, adding to the glut of textile waste that represents 4% of global trash each year. Yet all this waste and pollution is good for the bottom line of the capitalist class, because it means we're buying more stuff and industries don't have to worry about the consequences. Clothing waste, for example, is accelerated by the relentless turnaround of the fast fashion industry. While we buy more, their profits go up. 
and waste continues to drive on. And even when those in the US are reluctant to throw things out, we hoard our stuff in storage units. An industry which now makes $38 billion every year housing all of our useless gadgets drummed up by capitalism. And let's not forget the global exploitation of workers that occurs on the daily, especially during the pandemic. So acting against any of these destructive paradigms then means taking a stand against capitalist exploitation of workers and the planet. Because in short, capitalism can't support us. It's leading us down a path of planetary destruction that nothing short of global systemic change can fix. To end climate change, to end this toxic cycle of unsatisfying consumerist lifestyle, we must end capitalism. The history of change is the history of revolution. From the Russian Revolution, to the French Revolution, to the Haitian Revolution. As Marx writes in Clash Struggles in France, revolutions are the locomotives of history. They represent societal ruptures with the status quo that catapult us towards the future. As we sit on the precipice of global climate collapse, revolution represents an avenue away from planetary ecocide. Marx proposed a revolution built on the ire and action of the proletariat grasping for socialism that would morph into communism. But the proposed paths towards that revolution and what might get built in the ashes of capitalism are varied. Eco-socialism is one such path. It seeks the ownership of the means of production, also known as the factories and tools that make the things we need, by the very laborers that use them. In doing so, eco-socialism seeks to rid itself of the parasitic relationship of the capitalist class that siphons profit from laborers through underpayment and externalities. As Michael Lowey and Joe Koval write in their 2001 Eco-Socialist Manifesto, eco-socialism insists on a transformation of needs and a profound shift towards the qualitative dimension and away from the quantitative a valorization of use values over exchange values. Essentially, eco-socialism seeks to build an economic structure where production is not based around how much profit we can extract from an item, but instead how useful and necessary it is. In this quest, some eco-socialists point towards the successes and failures of previous socialist regimes, like the Soviet Union, as guideposts for a greener, more liberatory future, one that initially wield state power to form and organize this new economy. Eco-anarchism presents another vision. Rejecting state, governmental, and hierarchical power, eco-anarchism envisions a society of decentralized structures formed horizontally, emphasizing the importance of both human and natural liberation in collections of communities a world based on cooperation rather than competition. But of course, these are very basic explanations of political tendencies that have rich debate in histories. Regardless of ideology or the path, change needs to happen. Revolution must begin now. Because no true change can come through buying a Fiel Raven backpack or an eco-conscious water bottle. These are just minuscule gnats picking at the elephant in the room. To make change, to avoid climate chaos and planetary collapse, capitalism must fall. And in its stead, eco-socialism, eco-anarchism, or another political tendency informed by the teachings of solar punk, permaculture, degrowth, indigenous culture, and ideologies, must rise from its ashes. Unfortunately, videos like these, while very important, do terribly with the YouTube algorithm and sponsors don't want to touch them. But there is a way you can help. Becoming an OCC Patreon supporter helps our changing climate stay afloat and independent. As an OCC patron, you'll not only gain early access to videos, but also special behind the scenes updates and a members only Discord channel. In addition, each month, my supporters vote on an environmental group that I then donate a portion of my monthly revenue to. Patreon supporters are the financial backbone of the Our Changing Climate operation. Without them, I wouldn't be able to take creative risks and dive into difficult topics. So if you wanna help keep this channel alive or are feeling generous, head over 
over to patreon.com slash ourchangingclimate or use the link in the description and become an OCC patron. If you're not interested or aren't financially able to, then no worries. You can help the channel out by subscribing, liking the video, and commenting. I hope you all enjoyed the video and I will see you in two weeks.